Okay, hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite, and welcome back to 3D Games and Game Maker Studio 2. Um, last video was about first-person camera perspective and movement and some other things. And I said I would do third-person cameras as well, and here we are. So I've made a few changes to the uh, the project since it, since I left it off in the, in the last video, but for the most part, it's the same. Uh, one, the floor is no longer floating somewhere beneath the actual floor. I changed the uh, I changed the height of the floor to zero instead of whatever it was before. Some other values. Uh, another change, I've re-added the load underscore model scripts that I've been kind of bouncing in and out of the project uh, irregularly. And for those of you who do not know, that simply takes a 3D model file um, in game maker format and converts it into a vertex buffer that can be drawn with vertex submit. I've also added a player object, which is just a yellow cylinder, um, and loaded that in, although that's not visible right now. You can see over here in the draw code that's commented out. I'll be uncommenting that later. Um, if you want to see how that script works, I did some videos on loading models from files a couple of years ago. I'll leave links to those in the description and in the, in the card in the corner. Those have basically been a given in the last couple of videos that I've made for Game Maker 3D stuff. Anyway, moving along, uh, the good news, if you are used to using a first-person camera, then adapting that to work in third-person should be no problem at all. The only thing that's going to change from the first-person camera is the uh, the camera to and from values. Uh, the the camera from will essentially become the what used to be the camera to position, and the camera to position will essentially become the camera from position. The bad news or good news, depending on how adventurous you're feeling, is that unlike a first-person camera, which can for the most part, always be described in one way, which is something along the lines of you have the player who the character is, you have the character who the player is controlling. Turning that around would be a little bit weird, and that character is essentially holding a camcorder up to their up to their eye, and that camcorder represents the actual camera. Third person cameras, on the other hand, there are plenty of different ways you can go about that. Uh, on the one hand, you have games like Skyrim or Dark Souls or pretty much any action adventure or 3D game. Uh, the Batman Arkham games come to mind, Tomb Raider, anything like that, where the camera is essentially just floating over the shoulder of the player instead of up to, instead of going up to their eye. On the other on the other side of the scale, you have games like the DS and the 3DS generation Pokemon games, or uh, I've been playing a lot of Octopath Traveler. Any game that tries to mimic the uh, the 2D the camera of a 2D game in three dimensions in a three dimensional world, where the camera is in a fixed position relative to the player, and you can't rotate it or pitch it up and down or anything like that. Those are the two extremes of 2D cameras that it's common to see. Uh, of course, you can't have anything in between. You can blend those together in interesting ways. You could do pretty much whatever you want with a third person camera. So adapting this project, ad adapting the first person camera to work as, a, as, an, as an over the shoulder camera, I suppose I'll call it, uh, that is the simplest thing that you can do. The simpler one to take care of, uh, if you're starting with this. I am going to move this around. I'm going to ch change the order in which, oops, I'm defining the to and from positions. Okay, let me do it this way. I'm going to take that, paste it here. No, I'm going to paste it here. I love column select. If you don't know how to do this, just hold down the Alt key while you while you drag the cursor around, and you can select a a rectangular region instead of instead of just lines, like usual. It works in most text editors. It's great. So, like I said, just shuffling this around, uh, x2 becomes player dot x player dot y player dot z. Uh, x from becomes x2 plus, and I'm going to change this to a minus. The degree cosine of the look direction y2 becomes um, y from, sorry, becomes y2 plus the degree sign of the player look direction, and z from becomes z2 plus the degree sign of the player pitch value direction, or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to start with that. I'm also going to, um, okay, no, I won't, I won't uncomment the player draw yet. I'll just show you what it looks like now. So, okay. I always forget to do this. I forgot to do this while I was planning this out. I forgot to do this in the first two attempts of this video because I did this, uh, I, I initially tried to record this right after the first person video, except by then the allergies had gotten so bad that I just sounded like I got hit by a train and I said, I'm just gonna redo this. Um, 
I'm going to say camera distance equals, let's say, 160. I don't really care what the camera distance is. It just needs to be a reasonably large value. Uh, let us... Let us multiply the um, sine, cosine, tangent. Or sine and cosine, anyway, because there's no tangent in there by the camera distance, so that the camera's not st still essentially right on top of the player. And you can see uh, now, when I rotate the camera, we're rotating around a point that is somewhat in front of us, instead of um, instead of rotating around the camera's exact position. And if I were to uncomment the player draw, as I said, this is just a yellow a yellow uh, cone cone a yellow cylinder. We have all right. Just imagine that's a guy. Imagine that's a high fidelity character model dragon guy hero person thing or something. I put this together in about 20 seconds. I am uh, I am not a 3D artist. So the the, uh, the cylinder is our player, and we can we can do pretty much everything that we could before. Um, looking down will have us look through the floor if you look down too far. So I'll address that in a minute. Otherwise, turning, uh, running around, uh, when you hold the forward, I'm holding the the forward key W on the keyboard, and um, I'm moving relative to where the camera's looking. So that's all the same. Uh, firstly, the reason that the sign is inverted in the, in the trigonometry functions. We're not using the exact value of the player's look direction and the player's pitch, the player's pitch direction in the, uh, in the trigonometry functions here. We want to use essentially the opposite. We want to look the opposite way. Uh, you could say, you could use the, uh, the direction values and the pitch value plus 180 and leave the signs the same. Uh, or you could just you could subtract the signs because trigonometric um, the sine and cosine trigonometric tri tri sine and cosine trigonometric trig words point is offsetting the uh, the direction value by 180 degrees or pi radians that will invert the uh, that will invert the value of the sine and cosine functions because uh, if all you were to do was uh, was swap x2, y2, z2, x from y from z from around, uh, you would instead have a first person camera that is looking backwards, and we instead want a, uh, we instead want the camera to be behind the player, half a revolution. And the way I prefer to do that is to just invert the sign on the trigonometry functions. Uh, the way that you may prefer to do that might be to add 180 to the degrees. Next, because it's a little bit awkward when we sink below the floor, I'm going to go into the player step event and this comes down to where you want to restrict the, uh, how you want to restrict the camera. I am going to, I believe instead of, instead of, uh, letting the minimum value be negative 80, I'm going to make it about positive 10. That should be slightly above the ground. Okay, so this comes back to the world being slightly upside down. I will make a video about correcting that, I promise. Uh, so instead I, instead I will, um, Restrict it between negative 80 and, and uh, minus 10. Okay, I can now I can no longer sink below the floor. That's what I want. Is that right? I feel like it should be. I feel like it should be minus 10 instead of positive 10. All right. In any case, the point is, if you want to restrict the uh, the camera from going under the floor, you need to um, you need to clamp the uh, the pitch value. So that's the easy part that I mentioned. Uh, that is a an over-the-shoulder first-person camera. Hey. Uh, now we're going to talk about the fun stuff. And I think what I will actually do is I will um, I will commit these changes to the uh, the tutorial project. And I will create a new branch. Uh, and the branch uh, the branch can be what did I call it? I think I called it fixed perspective camera or something like that. We'll go with that. And you can pick whatever one you uh, you want to mess with when you go and look at the code. So for the time being, I'm going to leave the player the same. And instead, I'm going to come over here um, back to camera draw, and I'm going to start messing with the, uh, the to and from values yet again. Two is going to stay the same. Two is going to stay player x, y, z. From, instead of using, um, I'm going to start messing with from. Instead of using the trigonometry functions, we are going to uh, we are going to be using some fixed perspective. So, y from is going to be 
y2 plus camera distance. Z from is going to be Z2 plus camera distance. If anyone is a fan of geometry, you are probably desiring to tell me right now that this is not exactly the camera distance anymore because this isn't how distance work, but bear with me. If you want to divide it by uh, the square root of two, you can. And that is not what I wanted. All right, Z2 minus camera distance. Again, my world is upside down. Okay, so we, we now have a camera that is a moving in a, it's always relative to the player in the same direction, but, oh God, what am I even doing? So I'm moving the mouse, you can't see this, I don't have a, a face camera or anything set up. You, uh, I'm moving the mouse as if, I were to, uh, as if I were to turn the camera and the player is still moving as if, uh, as if this was a first person camera. When I, when I push the up key, I'm not necessarily moving what would be up on the screen north and uh, north and map directions. If I if I hit the A key to move left, um, I am I'm currently holding the A key and I am moving to the right, which doesn't make sense. And uh, assuming that you don't want to do that because that I find is very disorienting and not at all how you expect movement to work, we're going to be just going back to a a traditional um, top down two D game controls. So instead of saying Instead of messing with the sine and cosine, if we hit A, uh, X is going to minus equal move speed. Y is not going to be changed. If we hit D, X is going to plus equal move speed. Y is not going to be changed. If we hit W, that will go up. Y is going to minus equal move speed. And X is not going to be affected. And for down. Where y is going to plus equal the move speed and x is not going to be affected. So let's run the game again. Uh, assignment, did I... Okay, I accidentally typed a letter into code that wasn't a valid statement. I don't know how that got there. I probably was keyboard matching at some point. Now, uh, you can see by... The, the mouse cursor is recording, right? You can see by the mouse cursor, assuming it's recording, that I am moving the mouse around and my direction is not changing. Um, I hit I hit the A key. I continue moving to the left. Um, D continues moving to the right. W is north. S is south. Or up and down anyway. I'm used to calling it north and south. I'm used to using the cardinal directions when referring to directions in the game because um, I have a hard time keeping my left and my right straight, and I find e east and west to be uh, easier to remember. But if you're coming at if you're coming at game design from a southern hemisphere perspective, uh, you may feel like that's slightly silly. So that's a third person camera. Um, you can imagine uh, a lot of JRPGs like to do that sort of thing, although it's by no means specific to JRPGs having a fixed perspective camera. Uh, again, any game that will um, any game that will try to mimic a 2D game, a 2D top-down game uh, in a 3D world, that is most likely how the camera would work. You may notice that the look direction and look pitch uh, code is still here. You can use those if you want, um, uh, pitch especially, if I were to, let's see, Z from can minus equal the degree sign of player dot look pitch. This will allow me to move the, uh, allow me to move the camera up and down again. And once again, signs. These things are quickly becoming my new worst enemy. I can move the camera up and down, but I can. We're a little bit close, and the uh, this is only this is only affecting the um. Hee hee. Believe I will. I will want to minus that as well. Okay, getting ahead of myself. Nope. Okay. Okay, let's let's apply the let's apply the trigonometry to the uh, y as well, so that I'm actually swiveling around the player like this. Okay, uh, we are we are now swiveling around the player instead of um instead of just moving the camera up and down, which was a little bit skewed the perspective just a little. It's uh, it was a little weird. Okay, the other thing you can do if you want to is instead of uh, instead of saying the camera distance is a 
a, a fixed ver uh, local variable that's just saving a magic number in here. Uh, you can assign that to the player as well if you want. Um, and if you want to zoom out by scrolling the mouse wheel or something, uh, what would what would be up? That would probably be zooming in, right? Let's let's say uh, let's zoom in by by let's zoom by four. Now we can zoom in and out. Oh no, we can't because I am not actually using that anywhere yet. What is it? Let's just apply that in place of the uh, the old camera distance variable. There we go. Okay, so this does the same as before. I can now zoom out. If you want to, I can zoom in. If I zoom too far in, we will go into the negatives and what are we gonna do? We'll, we'll come out the other side. Not exactly what we want. So if you're worried about that, you probably want to, uh, you probably want to clamp the look distance between, I don't know, 64 is probably closer than we really need to be. And I've, the far distance isn't, as important, but let's uh, let's say you can't go farther away than 400. Okay, so I should be uh, I should be restricted how close I can zoom. All right, I can't get any closer than that. Can you hear me scrolling the mouse wheel? It's awfully loud. At least I think it is. And we can go out. So that is a uh, that is the that is the distance from the camera to the player. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do any of this. I actually. It, prefer to just have the camera at a fixed position when I'm playing games with a fixed uh, position camera like this. I say pick a distance from the player that looks about right, that makes that makes the world look the way that you want it to, and, um, and leave it at that. Don't let the player change it or tilt up or down or anything like that. But if you want, you can do that. Uh, it's all math. This all boils down to messing with the, uh, the player's, um, the camera's uh, to and from position variables, values. Okay, that's it. Uh, like I said, uh, I will have code in the description of the video if you want on GitHub. Uh, you can mess with either the uh, master as uh, the over-the-shoulder camera. I'll probably uh, name that something else, and uh, the second, the other branch of fixed per fixed perspective camera. Uh, if you want, you can use that as well. I will commit those changes. Next time, uh, 3D collisions, probably depending on whether or not I have time to record that. As silly as that sounds, will everyone stuck at home? But we'll see. If that doesn't end up happening, I do have a couple other uh, fun or potentially fun, at least, uh, videos that relate to 3D and Game Maker Studio 2 that you may uh, be interested in. But I'll make an effort to get something done with 3D collisions uh, finished in the meantime. If you want, I did make videos on this uh, on a very old Game Maker extension called P3DC several years ago. It stands for Precise 3D Collisions. That's a very old, very limited 3D collision library, as the name implies. It's not one that I can especially say I recommend using, but if you want to mess around with it, it's there. I'll have links around as well. Uh, there are other collision solutions I'll be talking about, at least a couple. The other major thing to talk about is, uh, as I mentioned on a couple occasions, shaders. Those are pretty big when it comes to 3D. If there's anything specific you want to see, let me know. Until then, my name is Dragonite. Uh, I hope you found that useful. I don't have a Patreon or anything, but if you're feeling generous, there is a donation link in the video description. I will see you all later.